12, it's a bit more, I can say, chaotic. Mm. You know, grade 12, they don't care anymore about anything. They get their yeah. acceptance. And that's a problem which uh, I, need, I need to ask about. There's a solution for muting <laughs> others. <laughs> So students they mute each other and they remove each other from the from the room. Right. Uh, I read the uh, the documents you sent and I didn't find anything about students muting each other. I found about the teacher if he wants to mute students. Uh, well, I mean, uh, talking about Zoom, I mean, um, Zoom um, is, no, is, no. is about which one? Uh, no, I'm talking about Teams actually. With Zoom. Teams. Uh, uh, Zoom as well, they did it. Our Zoom is a li little bit free based, but uh, again, it, it will take a little bit of, of time, uh, obviously, for for such discipline. I talk about classroom management and physicality. Now it's been uh, given new terminologies with, with the online, you know, experience. Uh, we're still coping with it. I guess you guys did the best you can do, given the circumstances and how quick everything had to be. I mean, you should be proud of yourself, the fact that you were able to transition in such quick manner to a fully virtual school in a matter of a week. You know, countries globally are still struggling with this. Even in the States, the most advanced claimed or proclaimed uh, most advanced. I mean, these these counties I'm aware of, my friends and their, their kids, they cannot even co op with them. Yeah. Uh, so um, we are lucky in terms of the infrastructure and the internet, the setup and everything that uh, we're able yeah. to do that. And of course, all of you are able to think uh, outside the box and you've done the best you can. And I think your best is standing out to be among the best in the world. So you really yeah. should give yourself a uh, bat in the shoulder. And, uh, um, and your team, like essentially shared with me yesterday, uh, Charles, you could probably elaborate on that in terms of us winning the eighth place in the world uh, ranking. So, yeah, we, we did a, we ran a, a March competition, um, which was looking at uh, usage over the course of, of March. Uh, and the school, your school came in eighth position globally. So yes. that was in terms that's, of most yeah, that's great. That's questions great. answered. Uh, so in the, in the month of, month of March, you answered just over 170,000 self-marked questions on the system, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, if you want to do the maths, if, if, you, if it takes, say, two or three seconds to mark a question, uh, how many hours or days has that saved you in terms of, of time? That's just a really simple kind of comparison, but it's really great to see. And I think if we, we can continue pushing the, the trajectory of the, the usage. Uh, we'll definitely see you move up the, the, the leaderboard. You're not that far behind the, the next school above you. So really, really fantastic result. And I think it shows two things. Firstly, that um, certainly students are engaged and are learning independently, They're accessing the system going on, but also teachers are clearly setting work um, and aligning it with their scheme of work, which is really important. And I guess something we're gonna, we're gonna focus on during this session and how you can best utilize the different tools on the system uh, so gentlemen as everyone is here i'm sorry assalamu alaikum how are you all uh, i'd like to speak about the people who are using ms teams if you want to keep um, if you want to start the students from muting each other and kicking out each other uh especially mr ayman as you mentioned over here uh if you have a meeting on ms teams simply you just click on each student's name okay you can just click on make attendee if you put him as attendee, no one can kick each one outside of the meeting or can mute any other student. But can he still participate? Not participate. I speak make attendee. <coughs> if you just click on make attendee, no one will be able to kick each other out of the meeting. No, no. I mean, can he still participate in sharing? Yeah, yeah, sure. He can, he can participate. He can participate. He can listen to you. He can speak to you. But he will not be able to kick anyone out of the meeting or to mute any other one. Oh, that's a great. Thank you. I'll try yeah. tomorrow with my class. Yeah, sure. I'll try tomorrow. That's for everyone. I think, uh, thank you, Ustad Muhammad. Uh, we will, uh, uh, Charles, we'll go ahead and begin. I uh, believe okay. we have reached 37 users. I think that's a good uh, portion. Uh, and um, in terms of um, what we'd like to do, we have about an hour. Uh, we will do presentation on the dashboard and we will focus on the intervention. I think that's really a powerful tool. 
So we will begin with the dashboard and overview, and then we'll talk about the intervention. How can we use this intervention to uh, in, uh, provide incentive for our teachers? Uh, I'm sorry, provide intervention for our students and put together a roadmap to help them and support them uh, virtually, given that the virtual environment is, is the only environment now. And um, can, I, can I advise everybody to mute? Can I advise everybody to mute your mic, please? Can everybody mute their mics? Okay, so and what will happen is I'm gonna mute everybody. And then Charles, I'm gonna mute you. That's the best thing I can do. Uh, and, uh, and what will happen is Charles will uh, help us explain uh, how we can use that. And you can go ahead and share your screen and begin. And then we will have probably the last 15 to 20 minutes to allow for our uh, colleagues to ask questions regarding uh, Century. I think Ashraf as well, uh, as, as I'm going through, people can utilize the, the chat function um, and they can just ask questions there as we're going and, and you could perhaps monitor that and, and make me aware of anything that pops up there uh, so I can address things as we're going through the dashboards if, if there are relevant questions. Um, great, well, it's a real pleasure to be with you all. Um, for those of you who I've met before, good to see you again. Those of you who I haven't, um, it's a really, real pleasure to meet you. I'm, Charles and I lead the, the international business um, at Century Tech. Um, so it's really exciting uh, to see such great usage coming out of your school at the moment. Um, if those of you missed it, uh, you are eighth in our March leaderboard out of our global schools. So um, that's an absolutely fantastic feat. Uh, and obviously we wanna to push to, to try and get you into the top five uh, over the next month or so. So I should, well, I've shared my screen with you now, so you should be able to see uh, the login page and uh, I'm just gonna log us in as a teacher account. If you're using a, another device, feel free to do this uh, alongside me and, and have a look at some of your classes. Uh, it might be good as a sort of comparative purpose. Um, before I actually go into the data dashboards, I just want to be absolutely clear, uh, everyone that they're, they're aware of the different ways in which uh, you can set work on Sentry. And I see there as, as sort of three different ways. Um, and three ways that we're kind of pushing during this distance learning environment. So you'll all know that the first page you see is your dashboard where you can view the data. Um, but at this bottom page, which is the class admin page, this is where you assign the relevant courses. And so the first way in which your students can access any material is from you uh, assigning them relevant courses. And that will allow them to access any of those courses in either a linear way through their courses page and then go and search for things that uh, they need to revise or those courses will feed into the recommended pathway in that adaptive way. And so in the most basic level, assign them a course and maybe your instruction to students is I'd like you to complete two or three nuggets a week in a specific subject area. Um, and that can be a very sort of light approach to, to assigning work. Um, the more hands-on approach is through using the planner feature. And that's what we are seeing a lot of our schools doing at the moment. Um, and they're using this to align their scheme of work uh, on Sentry to, to what they're doing in their virtual lessons. So the planning function will replicate your classes, as you might know. Uh, and so if you go into any of your classes, you'll see the courses which you've assigned them. And then by going on any of these courses, you can use the calendar feature, which runs across the top. Uh, by adding a new plan in the bottom right hand corner uh, and by doing so you can push and force things to go in that pathway for students. So uh, if I know on the 29th of April or the week beginning of the 29th of April I would like my students to study something then I can simply add nuggets and that will open up the whole course uh, from that, that, that particular uh, course that they have assigned. So I know that we're going to be covering these two characters during that week uh, and so I might assign that, hit add, done and then really importantly top right hand corner we need to hit save uh, now that means that on the 29th of april those two learning objectives will be at the front of the pathway with a little set by teacher symbol and again i think some instruction is required from you to your students uh, i've set you this work there's going to be a little set by teacher symbol i would like you to complete it um, so that's a really nice way to you know encourage your students again quite subtly to go to the pathway because based on how they perform in those nuggets, they will get recommendations to try and support them or stretch and challenge them. 
the more and the I guess the most kind of uh, hard deadline way of setting nuggets is through the assignments uh, tab. The assignments tab is where you can set things with a hard deadline, and this is mainly used as homework. Um, and again, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but just to recap, this allows you to set either nuggets or tasks. Tasks are kind of free text things that you can uh, design yourselves. Um, so maybe, well, we don't have any Arabic nuggets yet, but maybe if we do uh, some mathematics, you choose the level, choose the grade, and then create. That then allows you to choose any nugget within Century's course bank. It doesn't have to be assigned to the students. So they don't need to have the course assigned, but you can search for any nuggets manually in here. So if you would like your grade eights or whoever to, to study some trigonometry, you can go in here and search for any nugget related to trigonometry. Now, if you'd like to have a little look at it before you assign it, far right hand corner, you have this little blue button here. By clicking on that, it will open up the learning material in a new tab. So you can check the learning material, you can have a look at the questions, and then once you've decided that you're going to use it, you can assign that, uh, and then you press publish here. You then have to assign it to the students. Um, so here, you can have uh, either assigned directly to your entire class, or on the student side, you can pick individual students that you'd like to assign it to, and then set the due date. So I, think, I see this one as, as a bit more of a hard deadline, um, something that has been directed from the teacher. Uh, and again, something that, that you can use freely, maybe once, twice a week or however long it is. Uh, but that will appear in a slightly different way for the student. So the assignments that you set with a hard deadline will appear in this due assignments box in the bottom left hand corner. Um, and they'll see that their two weeks, the sort of anything that's assessed or signed for, for the next two weeks will be in here. Um, if you set something as a teacher for their pathway through the planning feature, it will appear in this pathway here with that little set by teacher symbol. So I hope that's clear. Um, any questions about that? I'm sure Ashraf will let me know, but those are what we're seeing as the, the three key ways for you to push content to your students um, and to engage them and, and allow them to access material. Remember, the, the more you assign them in terms of courses in the class page, the more access they have to be able to go and study independently, which I guess is a, a really powerful use of Sentry. Let's have a look at the data dashboards um, and I'll give you some tips on how uh, I would use this if I was a teacher, especially in this sort of distance learning environment. So you'll know that when you log into your teacher account, you are automatically sent to your teacher dashboard page. Um, I've got lots of classes here. You will just see your classes that you have assigned. So if I want to go and have a look at my you know, grade 10 maths class, uh, then I have all of my students here. Now, depending on how you've been using it with your students, you will have uh, a series of data here. Um, you might have a quite a few variants based on some students who are using it lots and other students who aren't using it as much. Uh, and that will also be the same for the completion of the entire course. Um, and then of course your average scores will, will probably be slight, slightly different too. Now, this is, uh, I guess, just an overview page. I don't think it has any particular uh, benefit for um, you know, encouraging students, but it, it's nice to have that overview page. And if there are students you'd like to have a one-to-one -one discussion with, you can click on any of them and you can use their overview page to perhaps encourage them to do some work. So this is one way we're seeing schools um, assign specific tasks for students. So here, for example, I'm looking at Trudy um, and down the bottom left-hand corner, I can see all of Trudy's relative strengths, her relative areas for improvement. And crucially, I can see what she's being recommended based on those. So based on her strengths, what can she do to stretch and challenge herself? And based on her areas for improvement, what can she do well in prior to doing well in these areas? So these are all the recommendations that she will be getting. And a really uh, nice task, I think, is to encourage your students on a Thursday evening or a Sunday morning or whatever it is to go on this page and identify five things she needs to focus on and then to go and complete those. And that is simply a homework. So you're encouraging students to be independent. You're encouraging them to use this page because they have access to this as well. Um, and then you're encouraging to make that next step and they can search for any of these that they want in their courses page or indeed they might find them in their recommended pathway. So that's quite a nice thing to do. And obviously, you know, you're not going to click into every student, but you can keep track of these and how they change over time. The probably the most useful page uh, from what you're doing is, is going to be your mark book because this is populating all of the scores that uh, the students have done. Um, and it allows you to tweak and tinker with it to have a look at different timeframes. 
So uh, if we just run through what we're looking at here, again, we're in my grade 11 class, uh, grade 10 class, it would be in your terms, uh, and we're looking at mathematics. So I can see the courses which they have assigned. Um, I'm just going to focus on this foundation course. Across here, I can see the topics or strands which they have assigned. So at the moment, I'm just looking at those diagnostics. And if you remember, the diagnostics are just those baseline assessments with questions, uh, no feedback whatsoever to the student, but really useful for getting that benchmark because students can't repeat these uh, constantly. You'd have to send it back to them if they were to repeat this. Um, so they are really useful baselines. They all, they're also used as part of the sort of cold start in AI. So we need some kind of initial data set to be able to make those recommendations. That's what the diagnostics will be used for uh, initially. So if you want to add in other topics, you can select all. I'm not going to do that here, but I'm going to select a, a variety of topics. Or you might want to select a topic that you're focusing on. And by hitting apply, you will draw in all of the learning objectives or nuggets that exist within those topics. Uh, it might take a, a couple of seconds. This is obviously our, our heaviest data page on the system. Um, and sometimes when I'm sharing my screen and Zoom, it does have a bit of latency. But what that then allows me to do is see where the AI has been sending the students within their course. Um, and I, uh, what I'd advise for this is if you are focusing on, on delivering content to your students over the course of a week, to use this page on a weekly basis to plan and to also track what your students are doing, how long they're spending on it, and, and which areas they've been sent to, and crucially, how they're performing. So hopefully this page will learn. I think sometimes when I'm sharing this page with so many people, it can be a little slow. So if you just bear with me. Here we go. Okay, so now I can start to see that they've done these diagnostics together in a sort of uniformed way, and then they've been sent on different journeys. But this is looking quite spread out. So in the top right-hand corner, in this options tab, you can condense it. So what I would always recommend is using colored cells, just because it's, I think it's slightly easier on the eye, uh, and then hit attempted nuggets only. So that's going to close all of the columns where students haven't had an attempt. And that will just condense this entire mark book so that I can now view it in a slightly better way. So one really basic thing which you can do as a teacher is if you're just encouraging your students to access Sentry and Maths, and maybe you're telling them I'd like you to do 30 minutes a day on Sentry, and I'm going to monitor that, uh, is using the timestamp feature, you can have a look at the previous seven days. So let's say it's a Thursday evening or a Friday morning, and I would like to check what my students have done in the past seven days. I'd timestamp that with the previous seven days' work, and I'd be able to see everything that they've done in that course. Um, now, if you're concerned, if you see a child who hasn't done much work, well, you can call them out on that. Or if you've seen that children are getting low scores, you can delve into any of those cells by simply clicking on them and have a look at how long they've spent. So here, for example, great example, Oliver, he spent a minute on this in total, a minute 28 seconds. And again, you'll know that you can open up this cell and have a look at exactly what he's done. Well, here he spent 34 seconds on the slideshow. He's got a few questions right, but then he struggled with the, the more challenging questions. So immediately my intervention to Oliver can be, Oliver, spend a bit longer on those learning materials or watch the video uh, and try and be a bit more careful when answering those questions. You can use those learning materials to help you with the questions. Uh, and what's quite nice from your perspective is that's all evidenced here. So you can immediately call them out on that or you can encourage them to take notes and maybe you can get them to evidence that. Um, but I, I see this as a great page to be able to uh, track that weekly usage um, through the timestamp feature. You could also, uh, and this might not work as well with uh, distance learning because there will be variables that you can't control like parents helping or, or maybe uh, you know, older brother, sisters helping, but you could set diagnostics as end of unit summative assessment tasks uh, because there are no learning materials in the diagnostics, um, there's no feedback. So you could say, right, we've reached the end of this week, we've reached the end of algebra one, uh, I'm gonna set them that diagnostic and see how they're doing, uh, how much knowledge they've retained, uh, and if there are any gaps within their knowledge. So I'd, I'd say that, yeah, this is probably the, the most useful page for you. And if, if you have, uh, if you work better on Excel, or if you um, would like to map things over a period of time and have that offline and possibly put it into an aggregating tool like uh, Power BI or something, then you can download this exactly as it is into an Excel sheet. Again, I do that on a weekly basis and I'd have that aggregated in different tabs on a, an Excel sheet. 
Um, and, and I'd use it that way, especially if I was doing this distance learning environment. So any of you can download this directly into an Excel file. Um, and I think, yeah, this is, this is probably my, the, the most useful page for, for tracking that weekly usage. I'll just pause there for a minute to see if there are any questions. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't looked at the chat function, Ashraf, but has anyone come up with anything? Um, there's no question. Sadrasha, uh, Sadrasha, can you see the screen now? I hope you can. I'm sorry, I just saw the question. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, I can good. see. Thank you. Sharif, you. you have a question regarding PC. Okay, that's a different question, I guess. So we'll, we'll address that at the end. So I guess. Okay, um, yeah, Mr. Mr. Ashraf, uh, it's not on um, Century, actually, it was related to Zoom, so I, no problem okay. with that. So for now, that's, fine. that's okay. That's fine. We, we, I can answer Zoom after the meeting. Okay, uh, thank you so much. No problem. Okay, I, I think, uh, um, Charles, it looks like we don't have questions. Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to unmute yourself, guys, and just ask it. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, Otherwise, we'll continue on. Uh, I think if you want to move to intervention, and then yeah. from intervention, uh, we will um, uh, focus uh, focus a little bit more about what else we can do. I yeah, yeah, I absolutely. have a question, Mr. Ashraf. Okay. So, Charles, if you don't mind. Of course. Charles, our school has been working on what is so-called the MAP test, if you are aware of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our school has been adopting that program in order to know where students are and where they should be regarding their reading and language skills. Mm -hmm. The question is, can we correlate between the map test skills and the skills which are embedded on Century for some kind of collaborative work in order to help our students gain the maximum uh, benefits from both, uh, from both tools? So yes, it, uh, we have we have actually done a um, we we didn't provide an integration, but there there is a school that has mapped uh, various skills and and um, kind of learning objectives from Century against Map. Uh, we've also done that with GL as well, which is another widely used external um, assessment tool. Um, it it's quite a piece of work and uh, making sure that everything's aligned and to, to what your map skills are is, is something that, that would require um, someone to, to put in quite a bit of effort. Um, I don't know if there's anyone in the current environment in your school who, who could help with that, but it, it's certainly something I know other schools have done with, and perhaps I can uh, link Ashraf to, to that other school so that they can maybe share best practice on, on what they've done. Um, the, the only thing that I would probably advise or, or highlight is that Sentry is, is very much a formative assessment tool you can use it as, as a summative assessment tool and those diagnostics are great for baselines. Um, but the, the nuggets are, are very heavily uh, focused on formative assessment because um, you know, students can repeat them, students can use the learning material to help them answer questions. Um, and the way they're designed are for that sort of long-term retention um, and catering towards those different kind of uh, ways in which students access learning materials. So um, it, it does require uh, quite a bit of work and, and it, it, it does need a, a more controlled environment. So in, in normal circumstances, I would actually advise that diagnostics are just sat within the school because you can control that environment. Whereas if you're sending diagnostics home, you can't always control that environment. So you're not sure how, how clean that data set that you're getting is. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Great, so uh, I will move on to interventions, but before that, I'm gonna show you uh, how I might use this page here. Um, and, and maybe you've seen some of these patterns already with your students. So, um, you know, you're hosting these virtual lessons at the moment and uh, that's great. It sounds like students are really engaged with that. Um, you could use Sentry as either a flipped activity before that uh, lesson, or you could use it as a summative activity during the lesson if you wish. Um, now, you could use that through the planning feature to push it to the front of the pathway, or you could simply instruct them to go and find that nugget. The benefit of doing that is that, say I am about to deliver a lesson on finding decimal percentages with my students in a virtual environment. Well, before that, it'd be great to have a, a set of baseline data. So I've set them this particular learning objective, and now immediately in my mark book, again, I can filter to just look at today because I've set it today. I can see how they've done here, and I can see if there are any students who are struggling. And that set of data is a great starting point for me as a teacher to then say, right, I know which students I need to perhaps focus on, or I, I can actually 
develop this piece of uh, knowledge further and maybe apply it to a problem or, or, or put it into a different context. Equally, it could be also used as a summative activity. If you've just introduced your students to finding des uh, decimal percentages and you've covered that in your virtual lesson, well, in the remaining 10 or 15 minutes of that lesson, or perhaps the homework activity, you could set them that learning objective, again, through the planner or the assignment feature, and get them to complete that. And that should give you a good idea of how effective your lesson was, how much students understood, but crucially, where any particular misconceptions might be hidden. Um, and that is going to really come from this next tab here, which links interventions, but it also um, looks at uh, something we call question level analysis. So uh, the nuggets tab, I think is extremely powerful if, if I can get it working on my, on my home internet. Excuse me, maybe I'll, I'll choose a course um, that's slightly smaller. The nuggets tab allows you uh, to, again, see your course here but also see all of the learning objectives that exist within that course. Um, so if, for example, um, in biology, you had just covered eukaryotic cells um, and you maybe push them a nugget as a summative activity, or perhaps you push this as an introductory activity and you flip the classroom, uh, what this allows you to see is how students have performed uh, as a group, but also, crucially, breaking it down by question level analysis. Now, there are no particularly interesting patterns here. I wonder if the Prokaryos Excels has a slightly more interesting set of data. Not really. But what it might allow you to see is potentially if there were any spikes in incorrect questions. So if lots of students have done well up until question eight, well, great. I'm confident that my students are doing well or understand the basics of prokaryotic Excels, but perhaps we need to just have a look at question eight. And so you can filter that or order that, I should say, um, and you can see which students got it wrong or indeed which students skipped that question. And again, what you might want to do through sharing your screen or uh, as a homework activity is click on that cell and it would open up that question that all of these students got wrong. Now, you might find something interesting. You might find a common area of uh, misconception or a pitfall. Um, uh, you could build a homework activity around that, or you could have a live intervention in your, in your virtual Zoom class. It might be nothing. It might be an innocuous kind of area that they've just struggled with, or it might be a language thing. Um, and so it might not be something that you need to intervene in. But this allows you to be much more pointed with your interventions. Uh, and of course, when, when time in front of students is so limited at the moment, uh, a page like this can be really beneficial if you are setting students uniform tasks rather than just let, letting them learn independently through the pathway. This also starts to feed into this idea um, of interventions, which uh, is something that I think is quite unique to Century. We, we've spent a lot of time building this. Um, and what this is showing in the top right hand corner is the intervention suggestion for this particular learning objective. So this graph here is a relative performance graph. Um, there are no absolutes and the x-axis is showing time spent, so short time to, to long time, left to right, and then uh, score, so attainment from uh, lowest to, to highest if you go up. Each one of those dots is one of your students within this class based on how they performed within prokaryotic cells. And what this might allow you to do is uh, group students accordingly or have a group that you need to focus on with on this particular topic. And it should be a really quick snapshot. So in the top right, you can see any students um, who are putting in a relatively large amount of study time and getting a relatively high average score. Uh, if you hover over any of those dots, you'll be able to see that and exactly what those figures are. So they are on track, they're performing well. Um, I don't need to worry about them. Students in the left-hand side, um, so this red dot here, this is being suggested that Georgina needs stretch. And what does that mean? Well, I can see here that she spent two minutes and 25 seconds on that particular objective. That would suggest to me that she has raced through the learning material um, and then she's got a very high average score. So actually she's quite confident in this area perhaps. Um, and so maybe she needs something a bit more challenging, a bit more stimulating. Maybe she needs this applied to a, a particular scenario. But these students here potentially need something a bit more challenging than what they're being offered here. Down here on the left hand side, this cluster of students here, I would suggest to them that they actually need to spend a bit longer on those learning materials. So I can see that they're racing through that material really quickly. Uh, here, you know, we have two minutes, 30 seconds, and the average score is very low. Well, that's not surprising. If you don't watch the videos, if you don't take notes on the slideshows, you're not going to perform well. So actually, 
I would go back to those students and say, can you spend a bit longer on those learning materials? Can you show me evidence that you've made notes of keywords as you've gone through the slideshow? Um, and I'd like you to try that again. And what you will see over time is, is the dots moving because they will move based on every time the child tries the nugget. So what you want to do is try and push them into that top side of, of the interventions graph. In the bottom right hand corner, I would suggest that these are, are probably your, your sort of focus area. So students who are potentially putting in quite a large amount of study time and that study time is not being reflected in their average score, they're scoring very low. Uh, now it could be a, a number of reasons. It could be that they are completely disengaged. Um, it could be that um, there's underlying misconceptions and this is far too hard for, it, for them. It could be simply that they are EAL learners and they cannot access the content. So the, the thing that I can't stress enough about this graph is that uh, you have to apply the context that you know from your students to this data set. Uh, and if I move to the, the sort of final interventions page here, this graph here, this shows you um, student performance within this course uh, over everything. So not just prokaryotic cells, it will show you their performance over all of the nuggets within this biology course. Um, and this becomes really useful over time because you will start to see patterns emerge uh, and you will see students who will who require that extra support from you. I'm not sure what provisions you have for, for smaller group interventions over, over Zoom, but that might be something you want to look into, you know, whether it's holding small seminar groups with, with children who are struggling um, or whether it's uh, you know, sending them some, some material that they're sort of able to access in a sort of easier manner. Um, Again, the thing that I would stress is, is context is, is key here. So if I move over to this far left-hand corner, uh, Geraint here is in your need stretch area. Now, Geraint might have just joined the school, uh, in which case, you know, obviously he's not going to put a huge amount of study time in. Um, and so actually I need to wait until, um, you know, his data becomes a bit more in line with the rest of the, the group here. So it, it's crucial to, to use your judgment as teachers, to use what you know about your students, um, when, when uh, taking the data from this page. Um, I have seen teachers use this with their children, uh, not necessarily showing, showing names, but perhaps uh, screenshotting this page uh, or screen sharing this over, over Zoom and not highlighting any names, but saying, uh, you know, this is what I'm seeing. Um, and the more time you put in, the further to the right you move. Uh, and the better your score, the higher you move up on this graph. Um, and what's quite nice is to actually, you know, take a screenshot of this, uh, and then set your work uh, to, to students or set them upon their pathways um, and then share the comparative screenshot over the course of that week. And you can have a look at them alongside each other and see where, where dots have moved. Um, so it can be quite a nice motivational tool. Um, obviously it's relative, so there will be students scattered around uh, that they're, they're not all gonna end up in the top right-hand corner, but um, it, it, it can be an encouraging tool for, for your students to, to try and push the top right. Um, so yeah, I think this, this is a, a really useful page. The other thing that I'd, I'd really stress, and this is um, maybe for heads of department or, or heads of um, year or subject area, is that linking Sentry to reward systems or certification systems can be another really great way to, to encourage and motivate students. We, we do that with a lot of our schools. We have template certificates that we're happy to share. Uh, I'm sure we could have them translated into Arabic if needed so that, that students can show it to their parents. Um, and, and I'm happy to go through how you might use that data from, from the leadership page, um, but I'm sure Ashraf, Ashraf knows how to do that as well. And what's quite nice about that is you can reward students uh, on different metrics. So rather than just rewarding on average score, you might one week have a challenge to reward students based on the most amount of questions that they got correct. So that's encouraging them to be careful. It's encouraging them to maybe repeat until they get higher scores. The next week you might have a new challenge where you challenge students to uh, who can complete the most amount of nuggets at 100%. And again, that's a column that we can download straight away and you can then share that with students. You maybe have your top five within the year group or top five in the subject area and they receive a certificate. So all of that data is, is downloadable um, and, and Ashraf can, can share that with the various leaders. Um, but I think linking this to reward systems that you have is, is a really great way to you know, embed it within a student's practice. I think with your older students, you want to be encouraging them to, to access Sentry once a day, doing half an hour, timetabling it into their, their calendars. So they know that between three and 4 p.m. or three and 3.30, they're doing independent work on Sentry or they're doing work that's been set by their teacher. Uh, and then hopefully over time, it just becomes second nature to them. They go on to, and that's their Sentry time. I've talked a lot. Uh, are there any questions about what I've just shown you or, or any of the suggestions that I've made? I'm happy to show you more things. Um, 
but I, I hope I, I can uh, some good Thank you, good John. Ideas. I particularly like the, the, your idea about the intervention and taking a screenshot of this screen. And I would, uh, if, uh, and, and this is for everybody in this room, I would, I would probably suggest, um, of course, you have to change the course that, you know, the course need to be uh, your course. Uh, and I'm assuming it could be Francis English, okay? Then you would take a snapshot of this and share it with your class and um, have them reflect on what needs to be done or what does this graph represent? Uh, and, and maybe that would be a, some sort of a motivation for them to, again, as Charles said, skew to the right, top right corner. Um, I know this is a not an, I, I like this suggestion in terms of it's a mystery. I mean, there's no names, there's no associations. And if they are to guess their performance, I guess everybody knows where they rank in terms of how much effort and how much questions they've answered. And they would probably be uh, truthful in terms of uh, uh, whether they can see themselves as a class move further uh, in the right direction. So this is a very powerful statement. And I don't think it's one of the advantages of ha not having any names on it is, is actually something that you can capitalize on it uh, in the future. Um, anybody else with anybody, any other question? Because I'm going to close the session in, in five minutes with a uh, few yeah. interjections of my own. Uh, just, just very quick question, uh, Mr. Wood. Is there any chance that in the near future we would have a feature for the writing? Because you know, in the writing, it's uh, mostly they have to write. It's not something that the answer is already there, like in comprehension or vocab or grammar. Is there any chance that we would have something that they would be able to write? Or at least, to, mm. sorry, or at least there's something that they would check whether it's correct or wrong uh, and what could be corrected in the language uh, as a skill, as a, as a writing skill. Yeah, I, I think that being, being able to write, um, and it'll probably require some sort of partnership that, that we have with another company, um, it is definitely something long term that, that we would like to integrate with. with, with talking with all sorts of people at the moment i think one thing that we've been requested to have is, is some sort of integration with uh, live video conferencing directly in century so um it can be easy to use. so i can't give you a time frame but it, it's definitely a great idea i really like it um and and i know that it's somewhere on the product list but the very long product request list um the only the only workaround i could have now and it is a bit of a manual workaround for you um is that as you, you probably know that you can um, set uh, assignments for students as tasks, uh, which are slightly longer uh, mark uh, tasks. So if I, let me see if I can find a, a suitable one, writing a poem, here we go. Um, so you can build these yourself. Uh, however, there is, there is no writing tool, it doesn't like that. Um, there is no writing tool that, that would allow you to, to have a look at the handwritten uh, question, but what you could do, and I, I've seen a lot of people do this, um, is you set the task of the, you know, here they have to, to write a letter um, and they've got, you know, the various things here. So this has just been designed by a teacher. They've set the amount of marks it's out of, uh, and then wow. it's been assigned to this student here. And what yeah. you could do um, is because, as, as I think you know, um, students can then submit a, a longer worded uh, response. Um, they can also attach files. So one thing that I've seen a lot of uh, teachers do is actually instruction to students is I would like you to do this in a handwritten format. I'd then like you to take a photo of it on your smartphone and you attach it as a file here. Um, so they can just upload it straight from their desktop or from Google Drive or wherever. Um, and then that goes straight back to you. Unfortunately, this isn't self-marked, so you would have to do the marking yourself, but you know, you can utilize these features like recording audio and video to, to give feedback on the handwritten submission. Or if you'd like to practice typing, then of course they can type directly into this box here. So oh, yeah. I'd maybe utilize that for now. And in the, hopefully in the future, we will have some sort of hand, handwritten tool uh, attachment. Okay, Bad. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rashford, Mr. Uh, Charles, I uh, got some simple question, you know, related to the, uh, does this app, you know, have some kind of automated feature that tells the students that their level standard is dropping, you know? Uh, I don't know, because uh, it's a little bit, you know, hectic to go for running after kids telling them that your standard has been changed drastically, whether good or bad, something like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
this is true. So there's no, I, I guess there's, there's no automated, your standard is dropping or your, um, you know, your, you're not doing as well as you should be. Um, there are little nudges um, that the students will receive when they log in each time. They're, they're based around metacognition, but they are quite subtle. The, the way I'd get around that um, is, again, probably putting the ownership on the students. Um, and I'd, I'd encourage them to access their dashboard uh, on a daily basis. And a nice activity for them is you can ask them to track their average score over time. So uh, at the beginning of the year, when, when they haven't covered areas, their average score will be low. Um, but they can rectify that. It is entirely up to them. And maybe as a teacher, you want to set them uh, a minimum average score that you would like to see on here. Uh, and so that might be 75% or it might be green and the, the colors will change accordingly. So red, I think, is up to up to 60 and then above 60 is yellow, I don't know, 50 maybe. And then over 70 is green. And so you might say, well, actually, I'd like you to maintain a 75% average. And that's going to be based on your own independent work. But it's also going to be based on work that I'm setting you. Uh, and of course, students, if they do perform poorly within the first instance, they can go back and repeat, they can rectify that and they can increase their average score because I think I'm right in saying that this average score is based on their most recent attempt rather than their entire attempt. So they'll be able to see their last score here. And I think these will feed into that overall average score. So they can actually turn that into 100 percent if they wish. Um, we see a lot of schools kind of advocating that and getting them to 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 take that ownership and, and onus themselves. But yeah, I, I absolutely take your feedback on uh, kind of push notifications for students. Um, I think I I really like to see that on um, the memory boost feature, which I'm sure a lot of your students will have started to to utilize, where nuggets are brought back to students uh, with the memory boost feature, so that it can try to move into their long term memory. Um, I think it'd be great if we could push notifications to students to say, you know, keep, you know, keep uh, going over those materials to, to move it into your long-term memory so that you can retain it for, for when you need to use it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I hope, I hope that helps for, for now. Okay, I oh, do yeah. have, Thank, you. Thank you so much. I do have a question from Mr. Virag. Uh, do we have any plan to align MYB skill-based uh, and IGCEC to content-based? Um, I don't think we have a plan uh, but uh, on, on doing so, but again, uh, I would refer you to uh, Mr. Uh, Brian and uh, Sad Bilal and Sad Rola on this. Uh, I don't think there's a plan for that, but I could be mistaken. Um, any other questions? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Charles. Uh, I am going to uh, end uh, the session in the last five minutes. I'm just going to share with you uh, my screen. Charles, just bear with me here. Uh, I'm going go. to share this one right here. All right, so I want to um, um, just share with you what we are in the school are trying to do. Um, obviously, long term, we want to use um, the dashboard. The school dashboard is leadership dashboard. Uh, most of uh, the supervisors and most of the academic uh, uh, consultant and trainers are going to be looking at this in the overall. They will be looking at um, English as a subject, the number of questions, the average school. Now the average school represents, this is the boys school and I will switch to the girls school if I have to. And those are the number of questions that has been answered. And those are the numbers of total study time combined. This is basically all the students all the minutes, all the seconds they've studied. And of course, this equals to 16 days. You can do the math, 16 times 24. That tells you how many minutes combined uh, our student has spent on this learning and, 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 and going through questions and, and learning materials. So this is a, these are numbers that actually we can use to see if whether students are engaging and whether the uh, whether they're taking this uh, into consideration. Uh, again, there's a lot of variables that controls this. I mean, we could see definitely English and math. Math's relatively, I think the, the subject with math is started earlier and uh, it's a powerful 30 days plus 34 days or so of uh, learning time. Um, and we can dig deeper 
by clicking and well, by drilling down into the subject and figuring out uh, what students uh, and what subjects and what grade levels and actually investing more time into the tool. Um, and we can see that this will help us analyze and understand data from different perspective. Uh, if we go to the courses as well, or classes rather, we can figure out exactly the interaction of each class versus others. I mean, for instance, if we are to see what class 5D doing versus what 5C is doing, and now each one of you is assigned a class. Each one of you is, is capable of looking at exactly at what data uh, and how data is actually training to them. But I encourage you, I'm, I'm not singling out anything. If all of you, mashallah, are, are doing a great job. I'm just taking one class, for example, um, just click on 5D, for instance. I'm not sure who's 5D, but um, that would be able to tell me that 72, mashallah, in, in this particular subject for the English, key stage two, meaning that it ranges from grade two, three, four, and five, or grade three, four, and five, I think. And those are the students, and those are the completed nuggets. Now, probably there's about 100 nuggets in this particular course, and these are the progress, and this is what the students are doing. And relatively, uh, according to what Charles have showed you, you can move further and be able to understand how your classroom and how, how much your, your, your students are, are doing and what they're doing exactly uh, in terms of uh, achievements. Uh, I'm going to skip to intervention. And in, in that regard, we can see how the, this class is doing. Like it's probably split 50-50 when it comes to English or primary English. We can see that needs more effort. However, most of the students here are spending time. They're spending relatively good time. And, and these students are spending, Mathalan Hisham. Wow. If I see Hisham somehow, uh, in the chat room or in my Zoom or in my team session, I should be able to say something to Hisham. I would, should be say something to Hisham, mashallah alayk, you should be proud. Or you should be really bring 110% when it comes to learning and studying. And I'm a homeroom teacher, so I definitely have access to math as well. So uh, I could see the dynamic have shifted a little bit. Most of the students are clustered around the average and, and are spending more time. And this kid could be a different kid. This is another kid here who's doing 110% in terms of spending time, answering nuggets, and those are the names. So we just need to take a moment uh, as a teacher and just figure out who need to be commended and who need to be encouraged. And I think it will take about a minute uh, at the end of the week uh, to log in and going into the intervention and just understanding uh, how, how our students are ranking and how they're doing in terms of the overall. And a verbal commendation or some sort of a, a, a written statement uh, is something that we should be uh, looking into doing, um, inshallah, khususan especially. And now we're doing a lot of this online. Uh, and that physical interaction that we used to have with the eye and the contact and, and the verbal communication is no longer uh, in, in a room. Uh, and so this could actually suck for that and keep them engaged and keep them motivated and, and, and keep them thinking about positive uh, impact and uh, help you guys yeah, I mean, introduce a little bit of uh, excitement into what they're doing. So um, by that, I thank everybody. I thank everybody who participated. And tomorrow we'll be, inshallah, having an Arabic session. I think um, Charles is welcome to join if you want, but I will be doing <laughs> that session, inshallah. <laughs> so... Um, uh, thank you so much, guys. And we should do this in a social basis, maybe next week, and have an open uh, mic okay. session about anything you need to know regarding anything with technology or Zoom or Teams or all the technical questions that our IT team can uh, help you answer or navigate through. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ashraf. Thank you, Charles. Shukran. Thank, thank you, you so much, guys. Thank you all very much. Stay yeah. safe, and um, I, I look forward to seeing the usage over the next few weeks. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank okay. you we'll do Bye -bye. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Well. Thanks. Have a nice day. Uh, can I say something? So, Ahmed, no, you go cannot. <laughs> no, I can't. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Charles, it's something that happened that we're looking at the biology material and we're seeing that 
not everything that we can use directly. So uh, we can't like use it immediately because some kind of pictures or text or something like that. So w what are we gonna do about that? Are we gonna make the nuggets ourselves? And when are we gonna do work on that? Because like uh, they did that with the math, they already did that with the uh, like English. So when are we gonna do this for biology, chemistry and all the different topics? Yeah, so um, I, I think uh, it, it's entirely up to you. I mean, what you can do is, and this would probably, again, take a bit of work, is you can edit the, the course that currently exists. So you could take, for example, the biology key stage three course, which is uh, grade six, seven. Um, yes, yeah, just grade six and seven. Um, you can take that structure and you can just remove any learning objectives um, that you wouldn't like to cover or you can remove any topics or strands that you would not like your students to have access to um, and you can simply just press the delete button and then republish it as that new course um, I would advise as a, as a science team to, to do that together so that you're not replicating each other's efforts um, and, and you also have a clear idea of which courses are being used and which courses should not be used um, on, in terms of developing your own content uh, I mean, I'm sure Ashraf will have, have his, his kind of input on this, but there is no reason why you can't upload your own materials as nuggets. Um, that, that's absolutely possible. Any individual teacher can do that. So if you have a fantastic slideshow or video or link to something that you would like to house on Sentry, so it's all in one centralized place, uh, you can absolutely do that. That's, that's no problem whatsoever. And you can add it to an existing course um, so that's, that's why I adv advise to restructure the biology, physics, chemistry course um, and, and remove things which, which you deem are, are not suitable. Okay, but again, we can't change the nugget themselves, right? We still can't edit the nuggets or what their content. You cannot edit the nuggets at the moment, no. Okay, thank you. You can, um, again, um, we, we can do a meeting uh, virtually, me, you and uh, Dr. Mahesh, I guess and everybody who's interested in biology as a subject, and we can um, go through the map, drop anything that we don't like, replicate the course, uh, and then have it available for you. It's it, Instead of like, I, I'm sure there's 80 or 90% of the nuggets could be used. So it's a shame that we're not putting it to use. I think only maybe 10% or maybe 5% of the nuggets are controversial in terms of content and pictures and whatnot. So lose the 5% and get the 95% percent up and running and I think this is relatively easy to do uh, it shouldn't take more than three hours to do no oh, I, so I actually did that I actually did that I added what we can use directly already it's already the course as a biology is already established and uh, while we is it published? everything is it published? Yeah, it's published it's published and I even added assignments for classification and diversity okay, then. That's, uh, and I'm actually working on a creating science fair and scientific method for the student this week, so hopefully I'll be done in two days, two days time. So can the student can use it immediately. I think Ashraf as, as well. If if uh, if you do an audit on the biology course and and there is a limited amount of of work uh, in terms of uh, removing images on slideshows and uh, videos, um, because of our our relationship as two two entities, I'm sure Tom and his team would be happy to either provide you access to our offline learning materials or edit them for you and then republish them in a course. I'm sure that would be absolutely fine. It, there might be a bit of time frame on that because of the, the current climate, but um, obviously we have access to all of the materials and, and we can you know, give them to you or, or edit them accordingly. Sounds great. Well, well, okay, that would be great. But the question is why we can't edit the nugget themselves? Yeah, it's, uh, because basically um, the minute you edit a nugget, if you think of a nugget as an individual data set, um, that you know, hundreds of thousands of students around the world have interacted with, the minute you change any element of that nugget, of that data set, uh, any other students who access it are uh, accessing something which has been tampered with. And so it's, it's essentially dirty uh, from a data perspective. Uh, so that's why we don't allow direct editing in nuggets. Uh, we actually have a tool for it, but we, we don't allow it um, for, for any schools at the moment. Um, but, but that's the, the simple reason. Oh, so it's basically a server lock. So if I change something in the negative, it will change all over the place. It will not like change or customize just for my own use. It will be it, changing everything. 
no, 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 it won't change everything, but it means that that new nugget that you've then published, which is based on our nugget, um, the AI will think that it is a nugget that is existing, uh, you know, in our global database, oh, okay. um, but actually it's a brand new nugget, um, which has had something small removed. And that might be as simple as an image, um, but it could also be an entire slide or it could be a question or it could be something tweaked, which, which makes the, the set slightly uh, dirty, if, if you see my point. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, guys. This is Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Charles. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Stay safe. Charles. Stay safe, everyone. And see you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry about the phone call today. <laughs> huh? No, I'm no, sorry no. About I, the phone I, call. Was, I was, I was, working in my office. So no, you're good. You're good. I have another meeting about to start in eight o'clock. That's why I'm rushing. That's oh, okay. Inshallah, so, we'll be in the hadith. Yeah, take it off. Hopefully, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.